Hi, this is Natalie from Namaste Farms, and today I'm going to teach you about using a picker and using a drum carter. Um, first, I want to show you because I think this is pretty brilliant. I bought these panels for like $35 at Home Goods, and they're really for like decorative wall panels, but then my husband hung them from the ceiling so that I can hang my yarns and I can see what I have. My inventory rather than like folding up and putting it in a um, like a container or something. I don't know, I like it because it gets, get, keeps them airy and um, also it's sort of, they're just decorative. They look really pretty. Most of you know that I'm, I, I'm branching out on my own. I'm sort of like, it's like a teenager leaving the house and going off to college. Um, I used to sell my yarns with the yarn market and I still do. There's still some there but um, and a lot, so please buy them. But pretty soon I'll be selling them direct. Probably won't be selling in any stores and that's just sort of, I want to keep my stuff my own now and um, I hope you guys are really supportive of me, really. Um, it's just easier when you're a farmer, I think, to do those kind of things that way and I, uh, some of it is because, uh, like I went to Vogue Mini Live and met a lot of people that were pretty awesome and they were, it was so amazing to meet these talented artists but I really felt like um, nobody knows what I do there and so even though they knew my name and knew that, that, that I was well known, they didn't really know what I did. And I just feel like like that that bums me out because I, I want to be an artist and I want to be well known, but I want to be well known for something, not just for being Natalie. So anyway, um, I'm also um, hand dyeing some commercial type yarns. They're just small mill spun, and I love that. And I got to tell you something. I thought I was a really good dyer because I dye everything myself. But until you dye commercial yarn or mill spun yarn, you have no idea what dyeing's about. I have a friend, um, Artsy Fartsy, who I know I talk about her all the time. I actually was almost crying. I called her and, and, and I felt like a complete and utter failure because what would happen is I would make these pots and put my, my um, yarns in them and then, then somehow something would happen where I'd have a little spot of dye in my finger and I would grab hold of it and then the little spot would, would ruin, it would somehow end up on every single skein and the entire pot would be ruined. I'd have to re-over dye everything. And with this other yarn, that doesn't really matter. I mean, you can't tell if you have a piece of dye on your hand and you grab hold of this, it's not going to ruin the skein. This process, I am not kidding you, I wanted to just, I, I actually wanted to stop making yarn altogether. I was like, forget it, I, I'm horrible, I don't know what I'm doing, and this is too tedious for me. And then I started looking at, at it from more of a yogi type approach, and I was like, you know what? It's the journey. The journey is more important than the destination, so you need to stop being a big baby about it and just forge ahead and look at it like it's intellectually stimulating and you're a problem solver and fix it. And so I did, but I have to tell you, kudos to all these um, indie dyers because it was not fun, it was a painful process and I still get very, very frustrated. But it's really nice to be able to have your own yarns that are in your own colorways to match with your um, hand spun. Okay, so anyway, my dog's biting my foot and that really hurts. Um, okay, so this is a triple picker. A lot of you have seen a, or heard of a triple picker, pack green triple picker. So very dangerous. Okay, I'm going to walk. So, sorry, right in front of the camera here. This is a um, very dangerous piece of machinery. And normally, you know, they have all these rules for how you're supposed to use it. And a lot of people say, I don't want to have one of these because I have children or I have cats and I know that they get um, hurt with it. But there's actually two things that, that, that clamp here so it can't move in a lock. Of course, I've lost those. I have children, so you'd think that I wouldn't do that, but I did. And my cat likes to lay like right here, and so it's sort of in the line of fire, but I am try to be an intelligent human being and not pick when my cat's laying there. The other thing is you have to be very careful of like things like your scarf or your hair or you know anything loose clothing. Um, excuse me. Please, that hurts. My dog is really hurting me. Because um, this will come up and catch. And that actually happened, and it caught my shirt. And it was a tight shirt like this, and it, it really almost, it almost gave me a mastectomy. And I'm not joking about that. It, it would be funny if it wasn't true. Um, okay, so when you're picking, first of all, don't do what I do. I mean, wear protective things. I mean, I'm just showing you the way I do it. I'm not at all suggesting that you should wear a scarf and no gloves and no protective gear. This is just me, the way I do it, because I'm always in a hurry. So what I'll do is I'll throw little bits of it in. You have to really kind of hold on to it, and it'll come out the other side. I just clean this picker, and usually it'll get you know caught down. And, excuse me. Shush! It'll get caught, and you'll have to pick it out like this. 
Be very careful. This picker, this 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 arm doesn't swing and hurt you. I mean, this is really a dangerous piece of equipment. So one of the things that I see that people do when they're picking is when you pick multiple colors, it can be dryer lint. They can end up dryer lint because if you keep picking things together, all the colors get mashed together and then you go to um, spin them and it literally, I am not kidding, dryer lint. And I actually, um, somebody won a bunch of fiber on one of my Ravelry um, contests and it was beautiful fiber and they, they carded it and picked it and they made dryer lint. They were like, I don't really like the colors. Well, how could you like the colors? You like made them all a big mess. And she's like, I think I'm gonna dye it. And it actually kind of hurt my feelings because all the dot, all the colors were like these beautiful colors. But you don't pick all your colors and then put them all in the picker together and then repick them. That doesn't even make any sense. So anyway, I know there's pieces of this peach color in here and I'll just take some of them out. I don't pick completely like a lot of people are probably running out. Um, <clears throat> I don't care that it's not completely picked. I really don't. But some people want it to be just perfect, perfect, perfect. No. Because I want to also leave the integrity of the lock, right? I want some curls. And if you keep picking it, you're going to pull all the curls out. And plus, you're going you're to start breaking fibers. Okay, so now I have this red. So I'm going to try to pick like colors, similar colors first, and then take one that is not similar, right? Because it would be stupid to do blue now. Because I know I'm going to do this like pink color. So I'm going to put... And this picker, I mean, if you have felted stuff, the picker can really rip through it. And this is the set, see, very dangerous. But I try not to be an idiot. I try to, which is hard sometimes, but I try to have my wits about me, not be drunk, and, and pick with my head on my shoulders. Not thinking about something depressing, not, you know, overly consumed. Okay, see, so you can see there's some pink in, or some peach in this pink, but it really doesn't matter because these colors are similar enough that it's all right. So I'm going to go and do blue now. But blue, I know that I'm going to have to pull out. And you have, this is kind of the way you got to do it. So it's dangerous. Careful, careful. Okay, so I try to get as much of this other color, these other colors out as I can. And then, see, and this is kind of a mat. That'll go in the picker. Sorry, I'm kind of noisy and everything's. Okay, there we go. And then what I would do is I'd go over here and I'd grab this blue and I'd look and I'd say, oh, there's a piece of red in here. I'm just going to pull it out and put it where it belongs. So why, besides the fact that we don't want dryer lint looking stuff, we also don't want constant striping. The barber pulling, have, I know you've seen people's yarn that looks like that and maybe your yarn looks like that. I don't care for that. I think it looks amateurish and no offense. But what it, unless you want it to be that way, it shouldn't be that way. And there's ways to not do that, which we'll sh I'll show you later. Okay, so now I've got these colors, and I know that for some reason I'm just feeling this peach and blue and pink for some reason with this tan and white. That's just kind of where I've been at lately. So I'm going to come over here, and here's the drum carter. Okay? This is alpaca. This doesn't need to be picked. This isn't even washed, oddly enough. Um, my friend Janice gave this to me, and I love it. And right now I'm really into alpaca, and I don't know why. Well, obviously, you know, the reason is it's really soft, but I also like that I don't have to pick it. So what I'm going to do in the, in the carter is I'm going to eat, I can layer things, right? So let me just run this through first, because it's going gonna, it's gonna to straighten out these fibers, sort of. Um, but I want some delineation between my colors because I told you, I don't want striping. I don't want everything striped. So it's important at the picking stage and it's also important at the carding stage. So I'm just going to continue. I'm sorry, it's really no noisy and loud. And this is something where you don't want to get your hair caught in it either. So pull your, tie your hair back or your scarf or whatever. Loose clothing, like uh, men's t-shirts or something, not, not a good... Not a good idea. Okay, see, I, I put too much in here. Not that big of a deal, no worries. I can just pull it off of this and run it back through. I'm not a great carter. I'm really not, but it's, I'm, I'm talking about the concept here, right? We're talking about the concept of carding and putting colors in it. Now, what I would do, I mean, this is, you know, this is, I'm not saying to always do it this way, but what I will say is you want colors together that when you spin, because like if I'm gonna, if I'm gonna stripe this, I'm going to want to put colors next to each other that are going to look good together because inevitably as I'm spinning, there's going to be some overlap. So I, don't, I, 
I know that, that what, yellow is the complementary color, whatever, of purple, but I don't want those colors barber pulled. That would look so heinous, so if I was using those two colors, I would not put them together. I put one on one side, I put one on the other, and I put something, some things in between. The other thing is, is there's something about the way that our eyes are that um, in design elements, you want odd numbers. And so like I never do two colors of something. I don't do like, like white and black or, you know, I would do white, black, and copper. You know, I would do always some three, three, seven, five, obviously, uh, they said odd numbers. So like, when, you know, you uh, putting your pots together that have like flowers in them, I always arrange them odd numbers. Um, okay, so I would just say like right off the bat, I don't really like, I don't really want a candy cane. So I'm not gonna put this next to the white. I'll put it on the very opposite side. Because like I told you, you're inevitably going to get some barber food. You're going to try and control it, but, you know, it can't be completely avoided. Okay, so when you're carding things, if you're carding colors, or I'm sorry, fiber that's super short, like under two inches, you'd want to have a longer fiber underneath, and then you sandwich them. This is something Lexi does. Um, so you'd sandwich them, so you'd put a longer fiber on the bottom, and then you can just put the shorter fibers, if you want, on the top here. Or like like sandwich it yourself between um, like two two a, a layer of on the bottom of long, and then you put your shorter things like let's say naps or con, you know confetti or shredded money, and then something else on top, and then just shove it through here and just do it together. Or you can lay it on. I mean there are no rules. I when I used when I taught myself how to card, and I used to set things on top rather than make it go through here, and I thought somehow that that was like my way of just Mickey Mousing it, but that's what people do. So when I saw other people doing that, I'm like, oh, so it's okay? Well, yeah, it is okay, right? I mean, this whole no rules thing, I mean, there are certain boundaries or guidelines that I'm telling you, but for the most part, you have to, you know, you just, you have to try, trial and error. If it doesn't turn out, then that's probably not a good way. If it does turn out, then continue doing it that way. Okay, so I, the, this, the peach is kind of mixing with this pink color with, oh, I love it. Okay, but right now, I just, for some reason, think I want this brown here. And once again, this is alpaca. And so, and it's not, not been washed, but it doesn't matter because when I set my twist, I wash my arm. So here, here. I, I love this salmon color with this pink. This looks great. I'm really good. So, and I'm just gonna, I know I want a thick enough layer. I kind of want to look at it and I want a pretty thick layer on, on all, on, on the entire surface, right? I don't want it to be, patchy and, and I want to make sure that you know in the middle here that, that there's not a big break because when I take this off then it's gonna this will separate from the back but I'm gonna probably separate it anyway and so then you have this you have this and this part and you have to clean it out otherwise it's not gonna card very well right so we're gonna kind of because I can see that my tines are all getting all bumped up and everybody has you know their own opinion on what the best um, drum carter is. I really would like the one that Pat Green has. I think it's called a wild card or something. But I think there's those new stuff, mad mad batter, right? I think um, one of one of the people I know carries those, and she's so nice, Ruth Klein. She buys fiber from me, and she's on Etsy, Ruth Klein. So if you want to try the mad batter, and I'm sure that there's other people I know, but she right off the bat is the first person I could think of that sells the mad batter. I don't actually know how to pronounce the name of the company. I was just guessing there. I'm sure it's wrong. Um, okay, so there. Let's just get going on this. because this. Oh, see, now that makes me mad. I put white, and I don't want white. I told you, I don't want white next to this. Unless I can do it without making a barber pole. So what I'm going to do is I think, see, I can put it up here if I want to. If I was going to use Angelina, I'd do that. I don't like Angelina. I have this thing against it. Um, what I prefer to use is, and you can see all of these cones here, I prefer to use these cones. So you can put things in your bats like, like cone yarns and, and like waste yarn, but you have to cut it less than two inches long, pretty much. I mean, that's like a safe, like, or, because if you don't, it's going to get all hung up. But I like to put it on top. And, I'm, and I am not trying to tell you that I am a professional bat maker. There's plenty of people out there that do bats way more than I do. That said, I know Lexi. I've you know, been to several of their things. I love being around her genius. She's an artistic genius. I don't know if people realize how genius this girl is. 
honestly, Lexi Boger is probably, I mean, she, I, she it just happens that her, that the, that the media that she uses is fiber, but she could have been a painter. She could have been, she's just thinks out of the box and she's pretty awesome. And then of course my other person, favorite person is, is um, JC and it's because JC is a, she's, per, she's a perfectionist. And I think that there's this great balance between those two. And so both of their um, clinics, if you guys have a chance to go, you, you really should. I don't care how long you've been spinning, you can always learn something from them. And like for me, being around Lexi, just her genius. And then, you know, being around someone like JC, it teaches you, she's, the way that she does things, she's technically, she's, it's really important for her to have technical perfection. Lexi can find art in anything. So it's just really cool that we have the opportunity to have such, you know, two completely kind of opposite people, but all the, the things that they teach us are really, really valuable. Okay, I don't know why I'm going on about that. Well, I like them, that's why. But um, I like them both a lot. Let's see. Um, okay, so I'm going to do, I'm just going to do some more because I can see that, you know, and of course, did you see I'm like breaking my rule about two inches because I like to break even my own rules um, because I got lazy and that was dumb. Okay, so now I really want to have sea foam in there and I didn't pick this very well. And for some reason, I want sea foam. I don't want turquoise, but I see turquoise over there that's picked. So I'm just going to pull this apart with my hands. Some people don't even use a picker, right? But I like to use a picker because I just I, I just don't want um, some people like chunky bats and and I'm not a big fan of that right now. That doesn't mean next week I won't be like I love chunky bats. Um, I just right today it's not my thing. Okay, so I'm gonna put this on the other side because uh, I don't want it hitting that peach. And you have to have some some people have a good eye for color and some don't. I have a pretty good eye for color. And I can thank my mother, who I really basically can't thank for anything else, um, for that. Because our house, you know, was very, I mean, we had like, like these giant, you know, mahogany, like Victorian um, horsehair chairs that were in um, red velvet with pink velvet striping. Um, really awesome. We had a really beautiful Victorian home and oriental carpets and paisley wall, uh, all of paisley wallpaper. Okay, so I'm trying to think because I will want more of this, but I see I only have, well, no, I don't. I have some green. And this is kind of a, and these are short fibers. And I have to tell you, if I didn't card, I would have, I know you're just going to, you're going to think that's as bad. I would have thrown this away because this is like seconds, second cuts. And they're not suitable for spinning by the lock. They're really only suitable for, bat, you know, putting into bats or, um, Something like that. Yeah, this is bad. Those are second cuts. I don't even want to deal with them. Okay. So I just need to get this color and then I'm going to show you. So, okay. I'm going to put maybe one more stripe of this dark. Maybe, yeah. Maybe here. I'm going to put some more of this dark. Maybe just put a little bit of accent. And don't put too many colors. I know it seems like this isn't going to work. But I'll show you. Okay. I keep thinking as I'm doing this and keep stopping. Okay, so you have to find where the, um, what I would call this, like, I don't want to call it a, what do they call this? Can't even, I, I actually don't even know. I do know, but I can't think of it. But um, see how it's got this divot where you put your little, whatever this is. Someone I know is going to like write me and be like, you're so dumb. How could you not know what that's called? Well, I don't. I admit it. Um, here. And then you like are going to unwrap it like this, right? And like when you're at someone's, you know, let's say you're at Lexi's or some, someone's and you're doing these bats, you know, you want to clean up after yourself. And that's what this thing's for. You know, because you don't want to leave a bunch of stuff in here so that the next person has to clean up your mess before they put their own stuff in. This is so awesome. I really would like a lot more copper in it, but that's okay because I would probably do um, an auto, sort of an auto wrap. I don't really auto wrap very much um, per se. I end up not really auto wrapping it. And then I would clean this out too because I don't want to leave it for the next time when I come to use it. And it's just, I just don't want to do that because it's going to be a mess for me. So it's better to do it now. And then of course what you do is after I sort of clean this, then you, you, you this is kind of stuff, right? Right. Take off. 
and you end up, you can make a bat with that or you can throw it in the bat that you have, you know, line it up, try and get pieces and just line it up. Like I would kind of do that. Use it. Get all that clean. Okay, so I'm not going to bother you guys by making me watch, um, watching, making you watch me do this entire thing cleaning up, but that's basically you want to have it completely clean and nice for the next person to come along and use it. Okay, so now I'm going to take you over to the spinning wheel and I'm going to show you how I start to spin these bats so that I don't have striping. Okay, my poor husband's arm's probably ready to fall off. 